Yeah, Primus! Since Rush hung it up in 2015, us Rush fans have been wanting to get our Rush fix ever since then. And from hoping that the band would get back together and those dreams being completely dashed when Neil Peart sadly passed away, we still want to hear the band live in some way. And fortunately, we have a lot of bands that cover Rush and do a pretty good job of covering them live. But we still want something that's kind of big, kind of grand some band that could cover them in a way that somewhat sounds like them not just the the musicality but the grandness the live presentation that we got with a band like rush which was so big i'm gonna backtrack a little bit from that when i was really really young i saw rush for the first time in 1987 the hold your fire tour and during that time uh, i had a friend who really liked yes a lot and he tried to get me into seeing that band liking them and he'd play stuff like The Gates of Delirium for me. And like, <laughs> stuff was weird. Um, I didn't get it. But uh, literally a week after I saw Rush, I saw Yes for the first time during their Big Generator tour. And well, to this day, long story short, Yes is my second favorite band. So let's fast track back to the present. And I have a friend who's really into Primus, really likes the band a lot. And at the beginning of last year, it was announced that Primus was going to tour and on their tour they were going to play the whole of A Farewell to Kings. And wow, okay, so Rush is gone, but we have Primus who we know Les Claypool, the bass player, really good friends with um, Geta Lee in the band. They're going to play the whole record on their tour. So when I saw that, I contacted my friend and like, we should go see this. He didn't even know, so he got super excited. So we both agreed and we were going to see them in June of 2020. Well, we all know how all plans went to the crapper in 2020. Pretty much everything was canceled. So they had rescheduled that concert for August 31st, 2021. Um, I'm talking about the Coca-Cola Theater. I forget what it's called uh, here in Atlanta. And that was the show that we were going to go see. So got rescheduled and I thought I'd take an opportunity to not only see Primus for the first time and seeing it with my good friend who was really into Primus, you know, kind of a two in one, see if I could get into Primus because he's been wanting me to like Primus too. So we went and it was awesome. I'll tell you a little bit about the show. So the band that opened for them was The Sword and I didn't know anything about them. They sounded pretty good. They're a pretty good opening act. Pretty, they could probably classify it as a metal band, hard rock metal band. They had a pretty clean sound. I have to say that from my vantage point, the bass player sounded like, uh, looked like um, Ian Anderson's cousin, the lead singer and flutist for Jethro Tull. <laughs> he looked much older than the rest of the band from far away. Maybe they're all the same age, I don't know. But um, they played pretty good. I just wanted to give a shout out to The Sword. Um, they did pretty good. They even gave a little tribute to ZZ Top. They played Cheap Sunglasses in honor of Dusty Hill, bass player that died from the band uh, recently. So they did that tribute to him. And I just wanna say something about the venue. The venue was pretty nice. It was. I think he could probably fit about a couple thousand people in there. We definitely didn't want to have seats, you know, where there would be potential mosh, mosh pit. So we were sitting up in, in, the, in the upper seats and we had a pretty good view. Then Primus comes up and that was pretty awesome. I mean, everybody was excited. The drummer, Tim Alexander, had his drum kit set up similar to how Neil Peart had his set up back in the 70s when all of the percussive bells and chimes and all that stuff that he had back then. So it was a pretty good uh, replica uh, based on the way Tim plays, but uh, was still everything that he needed to pull off uh, playing A Farewell to Kings. And the band started off with their music and I know some of their songs and it was really fantastic actually. I was blown away. I knew that Les Claypool was a top-notch world-class bass player. And you know, I mainly went to see him, but Larry Lalonde, the guitarist, and you know Tim Alexander the drummer were up to par as far as um, professionalism and great great playing uh, like I said I was very impressed with them as far as the sound goes it was really good I was very happy to have to hear loud music for the first time in a long time I hadn't been to a concert uh, for a couple of years I went with my wife to see her favorite band at another theater in Atlanta but this one was bigger and definitely the sound was much bigger as well uh, big enough to accommodate that big bass sound. We like Rush because they sound like more than three people. 
And I think a lot of times Primus does sound like they're more than three people because, you know, you have the guitarist and the drummer, but the way Les Claypool plays his bass, it sounds like he's playing bass and rhythm guitar at the same time. So it sounds like there's at least four people playing. You know, his skills on the bass guitar are just sick. I put him up there as having the ability that Geddy Lee has. Um, different styles, uh, different ways of playing, but just world-class bass playing. Obviously, I didn't go there necessarily to see Primus. I did, but I wanted to see how they pulled off playing A Farewell to Kings. And I gotta tell you, any Rush fan who wants to see Rush music live has got to see Primus during this tour if they still have time. As of this video, there's still uh, several shows left in the month. I would say go do it. They sounded really good. They replicated A Farewell to Kings beautifully. And not only with how they sounded, but how they looked. I mentioned Tim Alexander's drum kit looked like Neil Peart's kit. Larry Lalonde pulled out the double, the double neck Gibson. Les Claypool pulled out the double neck Rickenbacker with the with the bass and guitar. You know, especially for songs like Xanadu, which I'll get to in a minute. A Farewell to Kings started off, and the sound that they had for when they played A Farewell to Kings, they sounded like Rush. They made sure that they looked like Rush as far as the instru instruments goes, and they made sure they played like him. It was a Farewell to King's studio version as if it was played live. It wasn't like Rush playing live songs from that record as if they were on tour and, you know, they would sound different. They played the songs pretty much a uh, faithful representation of the songs on a Farewell to King's, but it just sounded much louder, which was pretty pretty awesome. I was wondering how Les Claypool was going to pull off singing because no one can sing like Geddy Lee sang uh, in 77. I don't know if anybody can sing like that. What Les Claypool did was he just sang in, in a lower octave. I mean, he couldn't sing those really high notes that Giddy did, but he was on key. He was not off key, but it did sound like Les Claypool, but it was definitely in a, another lower octave so that he can sing the songs. The details, um, I've heard this album a, a million times as many Rush fans have. So I pretty much know every drum note, <laughs> every musical note, uh, guitar note, bass, keyboards, because I've heard it so many times. And they, Farewell to Kings, they did it. They, they were fantastic. One of the highlights was Xanadu, and they had the double necks, both of them. As far as the keyboards go, we know how Giddy Lee multitasks on the keyboards. Many times, instead of less using foot pedals for bass, for the bass notes that were, that Giddy produced with the pedals, he would do it on the bass guitar while he was playing keyboards too. So that was pretty, that was pretty good compromise as far as getting the sound he needed. Xanadu was hard. Larry Lalonde did it, you know, a yeoman's job trying to do, play Alex's parts uh, and, you know, switching from the six string, the 12 string to the six string, just like Alex did live performing that song. And it, it was really, he did really good. There were some errors playing that song because, you know, Xanadu is hard to play. And if you're going to play it like Rush played it, you know, that's a tall task, but they pretty much pulled it off, except for a few errors that I saw, but um, it was good. And then they played Closer to the Heart, and it was a little, you know, kind of little joyfully extended like Rush did when they played it live. Larry Lalonde on the guitar, you know, did a really good job. And Cinderella Man was very interesting because if you hear Larry Lalonde, the way he plays with Primus, the lead guitar parts are very quirky and weird and like kind of all over the place and Cinderella man that's I think that was pretty much up his alley because that's how Alex plays lead on that song very quirky kind of all over the place and to me that to me was the most fun that Larry had of all the songs uh, maybe not maybe other ones are more fun but it just looked like that song was tailor-made for him because it's kind of like the way he plays it was reproduced nicely uh, Madrigal I think they extended it a little longer uh, it seemed like to me, and the drum part came in l a little later. They, that was uh, done very nicely as well. Obviously, I'd never seen Madrigal played live or, you know, a couple other songs as well. It was good to see that live. And then the, f the finale, Cygnus X1, um, they did a fantastic job as well. All the parts were there, you know, the beginning deep voice, talking about the constellation of Cygnus, and their timing was very good when the bass playing started and then when the drum parts came in and then all three of them coming in uh, the timing was really good the last part um i'll say when 
you know, spinning, whirling, still descending like a spiral sea and ending that part. I think Les was trying to sing, scream as, as, as well as he could to mimic that part. It wasn't as high note pitched as Getty Lee's uh, singing, which I think in that song, it's the highest note that Getty had ever sung in any album. And it wasn't as high, but he did, but Les did do the scream and it was pretty cool. It was a great representation and there were a lot of older fans there. Uh, obviously because they wanted to see Primus do the Rush songs. And I have no complaints at all about how they did it. They finished with some of their songs, and there was no encore. The sound was fantastic. The representation of Farewell to Kings, it was great. If you can make the show, go go see them. I definitely recommend it. Now, it's been over a month since I went to the show, and I was going to do a review of it right away, but it was, I was in the process of doing other videos and um, a couple of things came up that I couldn't do it right away. So it got me thinking, it made me kind of change my point of view of what this video is going to be about. Obviously, a review slash reaction of the show itself. But also, it made me reflect on Rush covers, Rush cover bands, Rush tribute bands. And I've seen different uh, ideas and opinions from people about covers. I I've actually seen people seeing, saying that nobody should do any covers. It's just let Rush be. It's just their music and that's it. And I, and I think that's completely silly. I get a kick out of seeing anybody cover a Rush song. I, I love seeing it. And I'm always looking on YouTube for covers of Rush. And as a matter of fact, I have a playlist on my channel called Exceptional Rush Covers, where you know I, I encourage you to look at some of these other bands and individuals who I think do an outstanding job covering certain Rush songs. I haven't seen a tribute band or any Rush covers live in person, but I plan to do it. There are a few good bands out there. Why Why Not is a good one that comes to my mind. There's several others, but it made me think if we can't have Rush, we have all of these bands and all of these people who love Rush so much that they don't just want to do the job halfway as far as playing Rush songs. They want to go all out and do it as closely and as best as they can to represent their their favorite band. And, you know, seeing Primus do A Farewell to Kings, they honor Rush by the way they covered the songs on, on that album. So I have a new appreciation for bands that cover Rush. It's a tough job because Rush is difficult to duplicate. And I have not yet heard one band sound like Rush, even when they have more members. I mentioned Why Why Not because, and I think I have it in my exceptional Rush covers, but they have tried to when they play rush songs especially from moving the moving pictures era or the moving pictures tour they they do sound like rush from the exit stage left concert that we've seen on video and here in audio they do a good job so they're worth checking out and like i said others are worth checking out as well so the bottom line is if you can see primus go see them it's a great show it's a great time you really like how they pull off playing A Farewell to Kings, all of the songs. And who knows if we'll see Primus or other bands do other songs or other albums of Rush that Rush never did. The only time they played a whole album was the Time Machine Tour when they played Moving Pictures in its entirety. And maybe we'll see other bands do something similar. I would look forward to that. Anyway, that's my reaction uh, review of the Primus concert that I went to. Uh, go check them out. Get yourself a shirt. They're pretty cool looking. Anyway, that's my review. I'm Omar from All About Rush, and I'll see you in the next video.